Man 19, AT rifles and field guns. Alright, on to the next one. We got uh, anti-tank rifles for starters. So you got the standard kind of allied anti-tank rifle, the boys AT rifle. You know, five rounds in a, in a clip. You know, it weighs a decent amount, uh, 16 kilograms. And it fires pretty much 14 millimeter uh, rounds. So they're, yeah, they're, they're fairly big, of course. Uh, you got Panzerbusch. It's a single shot, kind of like uh, the PDRD. It actually weighs a bit less than, uh, than like, say, the boys' anti-tank rifle. It's uh, 12 uh, kilograms, and it fires 13 millimeter rounds, so a bit smaller than the boys. Uh, and finally, you got the Russian PDRS. You got a uh, five round in the, in the clip. 20 kilograms, so it's quite a bit heavier than, say, the Panzerbusch. And it fires 14.5 millimeter rounds. And of course, this was this is is uh, gonna be for the anti-tank soldier only. Next, going on to anti-tank guns that you can mount on your jeep. Uh, you got the Pac-36. It's got a 37 millimeter. One very interesting thing about this weapon is uh, late war. They kind of converted these uh, kinds of anti-tank guns to fire rocket projectiles instead of the, the regular, you know, shell. So the rocket projectile could pretty much pen pretty much the thickest armor, but the problem is it had a very short range. Uh, you know, for the next one to be the, you know, the Russian one, it's pretty much the exact same looking anti-tank weapon. I don't really know what the story is behind that, but there's probably certainly something there, like, you know, one captured another's anti-tank weapon for repurposing. Uh, has 45 millimeter cannon, and with the Americans, it'd be the M3. Has a 37 millimeter cannon, and with all these, these are very small anti-tank weapons, so they have like no protection at all for the user so if you're using these you know caution is very much advised you're going on to the next tier of anti-tank gun uh, the more medium uh, caliber you got pac 38 l slash 60 it has a 50 millimeter gun next one you got zeiss 2 57 millimeter gun and finally the M1 with a as well as a 57 millimeter gun just like the Russian one uh, these anti-tank guns will have slightly bigger shields but again they're not going to be able to fully protect the user but they will protect them a decent amount so you have better anti-tank weapons, but still not as protective. More medium anti-tank guns. This is going to be like kind of like tier two of the medium anti-tank guns. You got Pac-40, 75 millimeter cannon, uh, the M5, 76, and Zeiss 3, uh, 76 as well, and pretty much the same shield. Pretty much the same story. Now with the the final anti-tank weapon, you have the bigger, uh, like heavy anti-tank guns. So for starters, you got the the Pack 43 slash 41, whereas I kind of know it as the the Flak 88. Uh, you know, obviously you got 88 millimeter gun. Uh, with the American one, you got the M1A1, 90 millimeter gun, 
And the Russians, you have the ginormous Biz 3 with its 100mm cannon. Uh, I say the the German and the American one, you know, it should be 360 uh, traverse. Whereas the, the Russian one, it has little to no traverse. Because it's not, it's not on a platform. And, but... It does get the benefit of having a great shield, unlike the other two, which has no protection at all. They're all fairly balanced around each other, and they're not completely overpowered, as in you can't just sit behind the thing and snipe somebody across the map. Yes, you will You will be slightly exposed, like, yeah, with like, say, maybe... The, the last exception here, you have the Biz 3, which, let's just say, it fully protects the user, but this is not going to be the most reliable anti-tank weapon, because, you know, you'll, you won't have that much traverse. And, well, I'm going to talk about some stuff about it right now. So you got a uh, light anti-tank uh, already unlocked for your anti-tank dude as soon as you get him. Uh, obviously dragged by vehicle. It should be dragged by a jeep instead of a, say like a truck. Uh, it should be the cheapest. It should be very relatively cheap. Not not too expensive so I mean you should be able to to rank up and make money at the same time it should be moved by a, a person because uh, these these anti-tank guns these lighter anti-tank guns were kind of made for people to easily move be even though they're not very reliable uh, an infantry group could actually kind of pick these guns up and move them but you know for balance issues and stuff like that of course it'd just be kind of like one person picking up the gun and moving it um it should have kind of quick traverse time so more specifically when your guy is picking up the gun to try and turn it on the spot and you know aim it at a tank it should be very quick because it's a light anti-tank gun, it's not heavy. With the medium AT guns, uh, you know, tier 1 and 2 of the medium AT guns, it should be unlocked at, like, silver 1 for the first tier and gold 1 for the second tier of anti-tank. Um... Should be dragged by vehicle, just like the other gun. Uh, reduced speed by a lot, so your vehicle should have like a punishment for carrying a heavy, a much heavier anti-tank weapon. It should be a lot more expensive. It can't be moved if the car is lost, and. It should have medium traverse time because it, it is heavier, but it's not too much heavier. And finally, with the heavy anti-tank, you it, it should be gold 4, dragged by a vehicle, heavily reduces the speed of your vehicle. Oh, very expensive. Can't be moved if the car is lost again. And medium traverse because um, the the platform heavy AT guns they they turn on the platform instead of on the spot. As for the exception of the Biz Three, you shouldn't be able to turn it at all. It should be way too heavy for an infantry to pick up and move. I uh, know I like the you know you got a light you got the the kind of medium one that most players will be say grinding through until they get to the heavy AT which is you know heavy AT gold 4 that's the same as say 
getting a heavy tank. I mean, they're they're both kind of balanced in that sense. Yeah. But now, if you if you had say a heavy anti tank gun, would you you would be able to say accurately two shot a medium or a heavy tank with that, or have no problem like say. Well, yeah, you should. It. It's because it's like an anti tank gun. Like you're taking a risk dragging your anti tank gun into the field blind you're not going to know if there's a tank sitting on the bridge or not but you're t so you know you're driving your vehicle you might get your vehicle might get shot or your anti tank gun itself making you useless but you still have your anti tank weapons with you like on your character but your main kind of anti-tank weapon is disposed of, so, yeah, you become kind of like a regular soldier at that point. Yeah. Going on to the next part here, you know, the anti-tank guns should only be able to use AP and APCR. They shouldn't be used for anti-infantry purposes, but HE, I don't think that would be fair. Uh, kind of ruins the point of using an anti-tank gun if you're sh shooting infantry. I mean, yes, that would be unrealistic, but that's besides the point. It should restrict the amount of anti-tank uh, weapons your, your uh, anti-tank soldier can carry. So there's many different loadouts you should be able to make with an anti-tank character. But if you're using an anti-tank gun... It should restrict you from using your anti-tank rifle, your anti-tank bazooka. So the only anti-tank weapon that you should be able to use reliably is a Faust. Um, Traverse takes uh, a lot of time, as we said. You know, picking up the AT gun, uh, turning the AT gun, and then setting the AT gun down. That should take a lot of time. Even if it is with the the smallest anti-tank weapon. Uh, every time you spawn an anti-tank gun uh, setup, you will spawn with a car. And the AT gun will be hooked up to the back of your, your car already for you. So you, when you start moving out of the gate, you ha you're dragging your AT gun with you. But you will pretty much have to... Be smart about how you use your AT gun. You know, turn your car around so your AT gun's already facing the right way. Uh, as I said in the first part of the video, you know, this uh, type of assault team should consist of, you know, 24 dudes and 12 jeeps slash trucks with anti-tank guns. Um, so with the bigger AT guns, I say you should be forced to use, say, a slower truck and as well as you know the 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 medium anti-tank gun the tier 2 version so tier 2 and heavy anti-tank guns you should be forced to use a truck instead of a jeep because they are much heavier simply like that um you know new resource AT guns and the general's aspect so you know your general will buy an AT squad or assault team whatever anyway there's gonna be there should be a new resource pool of AT guns so you not only take a jeep you not only take an infantry guy, or I mean uh, an anti-tank soldier, sorry, but you take a third resource, an anti-tank gun. Um, along with those resources, they should be very low, and production rate should be very low as well. Um, another downside of the AT gun is if your truck or jeep is destroyed, then you can't resupply with your AT gun. But typically if your AT tank gun is beside your Jeep, which it should be, 
then, you know, the enemy will typically shoot the AT gun first. But if not, then, you know. And finally, the AT gun should be like a two-seat vehicle. But obviously, as I said before, it should only be a single person to operate it. The second person will be kind of like... Uh, you know, kind of like a sniper team where one's watching and the other one's firing. So, anything you want to say about AT guns and such, um, Mr. Awesome? No, not too much, but so as far as the resources go, would that be just flat out AT gun? Or would that just be, you know, light AT, medium AT, heavy AT? It'd be, be fl it'd be flat out, like... So flat out, kind of like recon cars, like... Yeah, exactly, like, you know, you, sure got, you, a... got, you got BA-64 yeah. and then you got BA-6. Yes, they're two different vehicles, but they're they're combined into one thing, combat Same car. Thing. So... So, yeah, then that, that would make... That would make uh, yeah, but that's the point of having sense there. that's the point of having like the resource. Like you'll have scumbags in war using those shitty little anti tank guns and then you'll have the smarter people using the bigger ones. But then if you're playing stage matches, yes, you'll probably see more people using the smaller ones than the bigger ones, because the smaller ones are more nimble. There's going to be a lot more things that kill in staged anyway. So, you know, you get the point. Yeah. So, what? How much? How much ammo would you have with it? Um. Or you need to get resupplied, like you know. I don't know. Ten shells, twenty Let's, shells. Like, I would say something like reasonable. Like, I don't know about realistic stats, but. Let's just say like thirty, maybe forty shots. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to have too much small. ammo, like, b because like. Then you can just spam. Here's the thing. Realistically, you'd have your, um, your ammunition in the truck or the jeep, whatever. You're not gonna have the the shells on your soldier. Your soldier's not gonna be able to carry. A single shell on his back, really. It's, it's gonna be too heavy. So, you know, they'd be on the vehicle, and there'd be an ammunition boxes next to you, and obviously, since there's no ammunition boxes that are gonna be next to you, it's all gonna be in your vehicle. So, let's just say if your vehicle gets lost, like, maybe even you could go a step further and say you lose all your ammunition as well. And it'll just be one big piece of cover on the field, you know. Yeah. But I, I think useless. that'll be, I think they'll be going too far. Then your anti-tank gun would be so useless. So, I think it'd be just simple if you lost your vehicle, you can't resupply. Yeah. So you're basically a static tank. Demand twenty specialized AT vehicles. All right, and for the final demand here, we have the specialized. Anti, uh, anti-tank cars, you could say. So, for the Germans, they have the ROE, or RSO, or short for Rappen Schlepper. Uh, I, I don't really, I don't know if I can pronounce that all that well, but... Anyway, you have... The RSO has a 75 millimeter. It goes uh, 13 kph, so it's very slow, but it gives the benefit of being able to the gun being able to turn 360 degrees. But of course, as you know from the regular AT gun variant, it's ha uh, the gun has limited crew protection. Going on to the Russian one, kind of like the middle child, you got uh, the Zeiss 30, it's 57mm, pretty much mounted on uh, 
a T20 comes some of lets. So, you know, it, it has decent speed of 40 kph, and as you should know from playing the T20, you got a bow gunner and uh, a driver, and that and the, those two uh, seats or that front compartment has crew protection. Now going on to the Americans, for the, the last vehicle here, you got the M6 Fargo. It has a, a small 37 millimeter, but it's the fastest of the three, it being 53 kph. Uh, should be able to turn the gun 360 degrees, and it has a big shield meant to kind of protect the crew. So it should be kind of hard to, to snipe uh, the uh, the gunner off of the vehicle or even the driver if the, the vehicle is faced backwards. For these three particular vehicles, I mean, yes, they they're all all three of them are completely different. Like the German one may seem the most powerful because it has the bigger gun. Or you might look at it the other way, the um, American one might be the most powerful because it's really fast. If you got two dudes on, on that little vehicle, it's like the fastest light tank in the game, you could say, you know? Oh yeah, that's, I'm, that's or, so, as far as balancing goes, it, it just seems like they're all... They all seem fairly balanced. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, and or slow or and powerful, you got middle of the line. Yeah, or fast, but not you know doesn't quite pack as big of a punch. But so I mean, yeah, you you could argue that all three vehicles are broken in a way, but I don't know. Like even even the Zeiss Thirty may even sound broken. It's all the T twenty in the game. People already say it's broken. Well, let's put a 57 millimeter on there. Let's make it more fun, you know? Could be even a, an added addition. Like, you got three man crew instead of t uh, two or the typical one. Hey, that, that sounds like some kind, kind of a, some, some kind of squad vehicle right there. Oh, yeah, you know? Some squad like... 2.0, you know? Like squad get, get, trolling vehicle. Get my squad in there. Actually, do some work. actually, that does sound pretty fun. So, yeah, there you have it. And kind of like some final mentions. Uh, I wasn't really gonna say anything special about these vehicles, but kind of these three things kind of need to be said. So, like, you know, this should be like a new resource. Just like the AT guns, you know. This new resource is like an AT vehicle, opposed to it just being like, you know, a vehicle and a and a and an anti tank gun uh, put together. It should just be one whole resource, so it's not as complicated. Uh, as I said before, it's twelve dudes, six cars for in a, uh, a full assault team, so it's not that big. It's really small, and it works. Pretty much the same as an anti anti tank gun, just mounted on a car. So you're only pretty much gonna be slinging AP at tanks or even infantry if you really care about shooting infantry with AP. So that pretty much wraps it up. So anything else? Oh, there's just lots of just just. New ideas thrown out there, because all of these things exist in the time period, and they've all, you know, they've all seen action. So they they could potentially, any one of them could be put into the game as just either new toys or to help balance out certain factions. They're just ideas and really meant for feedback. It would be great if if these could be. If some of these could be put into into the game to just spice things up a bit, yeah, I definitely want to see like anti-tank guns being wheeled around by cars and trucks, because that kind of makes sense. Like if they had that in the game, 
Just add some more because, versatility in there. Because, like, people have mentioned, you know, oh, why won't, or why aren't there maps with anti-tank gun station on them? Because it's simple. Maps like that would just be overpowered. Like, if you had a... They would get abused. A per, yeah, if you, if, if you had a permanent 88 uh, millimeter watching a bridge... And, you know, if, if it dies, it respawns. There's no way to get across a bridge. Because an infantry guy is always going to be on the 88. So, honestly, all anti-tank guns should be wheeled around and not static targets. 